What's going on guys, this is Bunny Muffins. I have the patch 11.17 patch notes. Uh, we're gonna do a quick rundown first. We're gonna look at the preview. They made changes to Draven, Gwen, Kale, Giant Slayer, and Skirmishers. And then they nerfed Leeson, Nidalee, Rakan, Riven, Yasuo, and Heimerdinger. A lot of big guns there. After that, they're going to adjust Viego and then rework Sentinels and Spellweavers. All right, we also have some RP price changes and a couple regions will see price increases due to exchange rates and tax changes. Oh man, that sucks. However, players will be able to receive a double currency bonus from all RP purchases from August 23rd to September 8th. So I guess they're kind of making up for that there, but check the link here just to make sure. I'll leave a link to the patch notes in the description below. Now for the system changes, spatulas no longer count as an item component towards your expected component drops. They only appear in bonus orbs. That's very interesting. I feel like this gives whoever gets the spatula a really, really big advantage, but we will see how this actually plays out in practice. After that, let's get into the large changes. So last patch, we nerfed a variation of the Sentinel comp that was overperforming by keeping Galia at one star and having the Sentinel buff on Lucian in action. And while this build was overperforming, the more intuitive Sentinel build was struggling. That's why they were doing the Sentinel mini rework. So let's see what they did. Sentinel buff now starts on the Sentinel with the most items. If multiple Sentinels have the same number of items, the Sentinel with the highest attack speed starts with a buff. And then now they're changing their attack speed. Yeah, of course they have to nerf it because it would be too strong because you just stack Lucian or Action and then they'd get such a big buff right away. Uh, but the shield value is also being nerfed slightly at three and six Sentinels. So I'm not 100% sure whether this is a buff or nerf, but I'm leaning more towards the buff side by quite a bit because it is going to be buffing your Lucian right away, which is ideally what you want in the Sentinel comp. So even though the numbers are lower, the fact that you even get the buff right away is just too huge to pass up on. Skirmisher attack damage per second is being buffed at 6 and 9 Skirmisher, and then their reworking Spellweaver's stacks no longer have a cap. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then Spellweaver base damage is going to be decreased from 25 to 15, 55 to 30, and 100 to 70, while the ability power per stack is being decreased at 4 Spellweaver. So essentially, you just want your team to cast a lot. So in the late game of the fight, they kind of have an ability power Rage Blade after this change. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually plays out. Because you could get some pretty crazy comebacks with like a Velkaz with a Hextech Gunblade with a ton of ability power at the end of the fight and doing like a 1v9 or something like that. Now onto the champion tier 3s, 3 cost carries are overperforming compared to 4 and even some 5 costs who are bringing the main offenders down while also balancing some of the 1 star versions of these units that drop from orbs in the early PvE rounds, allowing for free win streaks. Alright, so Lee Sin is getting nerfed. Honestly, this one's about time because he's been so strong in the early game for like 1.5 sets now, so it's like no surprise that they do this now. Um, he is also getting a damage nerf at level 1 and level 3. So initially, aspect of the Cougar transformation dodge chance is being changed from 45% to 40%. Nidalee aspect of the Cougar transformation bonus attack speed is being nerfed at 1 and 3 star. So they're kind of leaving the 2 star untouched, which I'm glad they are doing because if you nerfed all 3 of them, it might be a little too much. Rakan Gleaming Quill damage is now being nerfed at 3 star recon. I've never really had too much issue with like 3 star recon. I haven't seen it that often, but maybe it was overperforming a little bit. And he also has missing health healing reduced at 3 star as well. After that, we have Riven, 850 to 800 health and 80 to 75 attack damage. Well deserved because man, Riven is so strong in the early game. Bonus attack speed is also being changed and nerfed at 3 stars. And then Riven, Blade of the Dawn damage is being nerfed at 3 star as well. Wow, this one's from 500 to 300. This was just her stun, so it actually really wasn't the big part of her damage, so this change is probably smaller than the one up here. Uh, but then again, this one is like a very small percentage compared to like a 40% nerf here. But when her damage was mainly from her physical attacks and not her stun, uh, I think this one might affect her overall DPS more. But someone feel free to do the math and let me know in the comments. Yasuo attack speed is being nerfed from 9.5 to 0.9, and then Yasuo burning blade damage is being changed from 600 to 550 at 3 star, and his stacking true damage is being changed from 60 to 55 at 3 star as well. So lots of 3 star nerfs. They were really good. My issue with 3 star comps is that it's hard to get them to 3 stars, like you don't always get it every game, and if you're ever hard stuck at 2 star ribbon or 2 star Yasuo, the game just felt so bad in my opinion. Uh, unless you had like a crazy win streak in the early game and like were able to turbo level up and 
uh, generate a huge HP lead. Overall, I can see why these changes happen because they did dominate really, really hard once you got them to three star. But I kind of like the high risk, high reward comps, which is kind of what they are. Uh, now on to Champions Tier 4, Draven is near where he should be, so we expect this small buff to have a major impact in pushing Draven comps into Draven comps. Okay, so I am glad for Draven buffs. I've always complained about him in this set so far, so hopefully this does put him back on the map. Now on to the Tier 5 Champions, we have Gwen, Skip and Slash, is being buffed across the board at 1, 2, and 3 star in terms of her damage, and then Heimerdinger's attack speed being nerfed from 0.75 to 0.7. Man, Heimerdinger was way too strong, right guys? He was like good in so many different comps, and since there's a lot of like AP items being built right now because of A-bombs and Belkaz, it just transitioned into him like way too easily, right? So yeah, it makes sense that they nerf his attack speed. The man nerf, I'm not sure about. I feel like they only needed to do one because some games Heimerdinger doesn't cast, and nerfing the mana makes that happen even more often than it probably should. Uh, Kale health being increased by a bunch, and same with her attack speed. I don't know if this puts her back on the map. It really depends on how strong knights are, because mostly you run Kale with knights. And knights have like a damage reduction, so it depends what units are meta. If it's like a big bursty guy, knights don't really help much. But if the meta is around units that do constant damage, knights definitely do help a lot. Viego Sovereign Domination Damage Increase per Second is now being changed from 100% to 50%, and then the Domination Damage is being unchanged at level 1, buffed at level 2, and buffed at level 3. So overall, this is a pretty big nerf. Viego Sovereign Domination Stolen Champion Health Decay is now being changed from 15, 7, 0% to 10, 5, and 0%. So at least it's stronger once you get it, but this damage increase per second change is huge because it's essentially like an exponential growth that is being reduced by half. It makes sense though because we've all seen Viego steal enemy carries like a little too often if you guess the right side and if they're not properly protected. Uh, so overall, like I'm kind of down with this change. Items, we are giving Giant Slayer an overall buff by making it better in a variety of cases. This is also a brand awareness buff for TFT Esports. Giant Slayer bonus damage health threshold is being changed from 1750 to 1600. Giant Slayer damage scaling is being buffed from 10 to 20%. And then Giant Slayer high damage scaling is being changed from 75% to 70. It's really weird. Every team is running three stars and warmogs. So I have no idea why Giant Slayer isn't being built. So I guess if it's still not good at its old state when it is very useful in this meta, you kind of need to change it, right? It seems weird, but like I'm guessing they looked at the numbers. I don't think it's just a case of people not building it enough. I think it's a case of it not being strong enough against the current use cases that it has. So if that is why I am completely with this buff. Other than that, before I felt like it was slightly underrated, it's just weird to build on certain champions because sword and bow build so much better items on your attack damage champions. But again, like with the high health in this meta with like the three star three costs that people were complaining about and the warmog spam, I feel like this should have been built more. Small changes now. So abominations, monstrosity, armor, and magic resist is being nerfed at three and four abomination completely makes sense abominations were broken base attack damage is being buffed at three star and then abomination attack damage per star level is being buffed at three star per well sorry i meant the five abomination for these two attack damage buffs so i guess they reward more having five and then they nerf the three and four abomination which makes complete sense because like typically people are just running three and four and yeah it's just been outperforming for like too many patches in a row i've had it in like my s tier for like I think two or three weeks now. Legionnaire attack speed is being changed. They're buffing it at four and six Legionnaire and is going from 65 to 75 and then 120 to 135 at four and six Legionnaire. Redeemed armor and magic resist is being changed as well. We are going to see a nerf at nine redeemed. I never knew people got to nine redeemed, but that is kind of fun. I don't really know why they did this. I guess they just thought it was too strong. Champions tier one, Vayne is getting an attack damage buff. Zig's arcane bomb damage is getting buffed at three star. So it feels like they keep buffing Vayne on every aspect except for her attack speed, which is what I think they should do because she scales way too hard off her attack speed. So even like a tiny change to it could make her like super, super strong or super, super weak. But it brings the question, what health does she need or what attack damage does she need to actually be worth it now? They're thinking this five damage buff is the difference. Um, it also depends on what their goal was. Do they want Vayne three star to be a carry or do they just want Vayne to be stronger in the early game and then transition later into a forgotten comp? 
Champion tier 2, Kennen attack speed being nerfed, Pike attack speed being buffed, set buffed by 50 health, and Soraka attack speed being buffed by 0.5. Maybe we see more reroll Soraka. Uh, Kennen, yeah, Hellions are pretty good right now, and Kennen was a part of that. But I feel like after they nerfed Tristana, you don't need to nerf Kennen after that, because I feel like the comp is like in a decent spot right now. I want to play more reroll Soraka. It was really fun in the last set, but we had Coven back then, and we just don't have that anymore. But now we just have to play Dawnbringers with Soraka, which isn't quite as strong. Champions tier 3, Ash's health is being buffed by 50, Lux's attack speed is being buffed by 0.5, and then Misfortune's damage is being changed a bit. She is being nerfed at 3 star for her damage, which means that the reroll Cavalier Cannoneer is going to feel a slight hit there. The thing is, like, you don't often get to Misfortune 3 because you're re-rolling for all the 2-star units instead, and then it's only the rare games where you actually get both the 3-star Hecarim and Sejuani and the Misfortune. Nocturne Umbra Blade's base damage is being changed from 70 to 80, 85 to 90, and then 110 to 100, so it's 3-stars being nerfed, 1 and 2-star being buffed. I actually like this change a lot because I feel like sometimes Nocturne 1 and 2 should be hitting a little harder than it does right now if you have, like, two or four assassins with maybe like a two or three revenant buff champions tier four what are you going to call a group of crows don't worry fid will still do that with an item or two fiddlesticks crow storm damage per second is being nerfed at one and two star karma soul flare damage is being buffed at one and two star by a tiny bit and then velkos mana nerf is being changed by 10 so fiddlesticks yeah he's a little too strong without any items but that's just because abominations are strong so you just play him in abominations you add some revenants and you just have an unstoppable tank line but i do agree that like he probably shouldn't be killing a lot of things without items because i feel like fiddle should be a carry but no one actually builds him so maybe this so maybe this incentivizes people to actually build him karma soul flare damage well deserved i don't know if this brings her back she's always in a very delicate situation either she's going to be one tapping people or she's going to be two tapping people and like that literally takes double the time to get work done so it's always very hard to balance karma you have to decide which units that she should be able to one shot and which that she can't velkaz mana nerve well deserved velkaz was creeping into the meta and now on to the champion tier five so action nerf by 0.1 and i think this is to go in line with the sentinel buff and Garen mana adjustment is being changed from 100 mana to 80 and then 170 to 160. So his first cast is harder, subsequent casts are easier. This is after the big mana change to Garen in the last patch, just to keep that in mind. Victorious trait missing health damage is being buffed from 40% to 50%. And then Teemo's cruelty spell damage is being nerfed at 1 star by a tiny bit, just by 10 damage. And then Teemo's Cruel Trait now activates more quickly and reliably. Teemo's Cruel Trait can now occur more than once per combat, allowing Teemo to eat both the final enemy champion and the Doppel, Hellion, and Void spawn that spawns. Oh, I didn't even know that happened. This sounds like a bug fix or something like that. If you guys actually had this happen in your game where, like, you eat two in a row, definitely, like, tag me on, like, Instagram or Twitter or wherever you guys are posting it. Or just post it in our Discord at discord.gg slash bunnymuffins. So now onto Volibear, 100 health nerf. And yeah, Volibear, I, I don't know why they, like, I, I, like, perused this before, and obviously Volibear is going to be strong. Revenant's, like, the best front line right now, so, yeah, it, like, nerf them at least a tiny bit. Items, the Radiant Stoneplate bonus max health regen is being buffed from 2 to 3%. Gargoyle Stoneplate is being buffed from 18 to 20 magic resist per target, and then Hextech Gunblade, Excess Max Shield, 300 to 400. Ooh, I like this change. Maybe, like, Hextech Belkaz is going to come back. User interface, match history now appears as a tab in the TFT hub near your battle pass. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's, it's looking like they're adding more things to the client relevant to TFT, which is all fine and welcome. Now onto bug fixes. Daisied and Confused, Ivern's tooltip now shows Daisy's damage and stun duration. Excellent, fix an issue where a Draconic 3-turn three, three turn egg dropped one more gold than intended. Charity case, Chalice of Charity, Spellvamp no longer has reduced effectiveness on AoE abilities till death we part. Aatrox will now heal himself even if his ability dies mid-animation. Oh man, this has happened to me in the past, I'm pretty sure. Don't let them take it from you. Units affected by both Frozen Heart of Gold and another attack speed slow will now properly shed the Frozen Heart of Gold debuff when leaving its radius. And then culminated, Lucian's ability now is properly interrupted by Lulu's Polymorph. Alright, lots of good changes here. In my opinion, like, 
Normally I complain a lot about the patch notes, but honestly, this is probably like a seven or eight out of 10. I feel like they didn't go overboard on anything. I feel like they hit the ones that they should have hit in the previous patches, such as Abominations, Heimerdinger, and things of that nature. The only thing I'm not too sure of is the three star nerfs, because again, like I feel like the high risk, high reward strategies are always something that's like interesting in TFT and going for a three star three cost definitely is that because you're pretty much like always gonna get a two star four cost. You're pretty much gonna get a one star legendary, but getting a three star three cost is like the next threshold. It's like a bump up and it's like much more rare. So I feel like they should be stronger than the other four costs, but it just depends on how much and what their goal is behind those changes. Um, what I'm most excited for is the Giant Slayer changes because I really like that item. I thought it was underrated, but it got a buff anyway, so I feel like it should be working out. However, like maybe people don't play three stars as much, so maybe it has less value because of that. People definitely will still be building Warmog. So let me know down in the comments what comps you guys are most excited to play with these changes. I will be coming out with a meta snapshot on Friday as per usual. And check out my other social media links, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all in the description below. And if you guys are new, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time.